Have you ever eaten so much of one thing that you, I won't be gross, <laughs> and you threw up and you never wanted it again? Yeah. That's the effect of sin. When you're walking in holiness, it's not because you're having to say, oh, look, you can't do this and you can't do that and you can't do this. You're not bound up by holiness. We're set free by holiness. We get sick of the sin consciousness because we've, we've been forgiven. And the second we get the revelation of I'm forgiven and sin costs too much. That's right. Then all of a sudden the reign of the Holy Ghost begins to come. And wash away all the junk. And the drought is over. I hear the sound of a heavy rain. Listen to me, atmosphere. Over Cheshire Bridge Road, I speak to you. There's been a drought long enough. There's been a drought of behaviors and, and a drought of, 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 of the presence of God. But hear me, atmosphere. You're opening up. And I speak to you, principalities and powers and rulers of wickedness in heavenly places. And I tell you, the Holy Spirit is welcome to reign here. Yeah. So you may be excused when we move you out to the side. And the expansion of the storm that's coming, because I see a cloud the size of a man's hand coming down from between you right now. And I see it in my spirit. There's a rain coming and it's going to flood this place and strippers are going to walk off poles and come in here. Yeah. 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 People are going to walk out of places that represent names. I mean, there's a reason we're prophetically right across from the heretic. Uh -huh. People are going to walk in and discover the King of Glory. I see a cloud the size of a man's hand and I hear a heavy rain. And it's not about us. I don't even care about their sin. You know what? I don't care about what people have done. Right? None of that matters. It's one person did the one thing that truly matters. And it was Jesus Christ on the cross and Him crucified. He took your sin so that you don't have to have it anymore. Oh, there's an open heaven. Rain. The reason people sin is because their their mouths are parched. Their spiritual mouths. They're in dry ground. Oh, but the rain's coming. All right. Sin is forgiven. All you have to do is receive it. Everybody say, Lord, Lord, forgive us, forgive us of our sins. Of our sins. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. That easy. Jesus made sure that sin was the easiest thing in the world to take care of. The easiest thing. Now, I mean, if you have bodies in your crawl space, we probably need to call the law. <laughs> but Jesus still forgives you. But Jesus will forgive you in jail, and we need to make sure, you know. But here's the thing. Quit trying to make restitution for your sins. He paid it all. Jesus paid it all. All to Him we owe. You carrying it around ain't going to do. Your carrying around isn't going to do one bit of any good. All right, I'll move on real quick. Did y'all receive that this morning? Yeah. 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 Somebody brings it up to you and tries to talk to you about sin you've been forgiven of, look at him and say, Yo, mom. <laughs> Paul the Apostle. I give you scripture reference. I don't know where it's at, but it's in there somewhere. Oh, look it up later. Paul the Apostle wrote to one of the churches and said this. He said, I have wronged no man. 
Now, Paul was Saul before he became Paul. And you know what he did? He killed a multitude of Christians. He killed them. So somebody sitting at New Covenant Church of Corinth, or wherever he wrote it, they're probably sitting there, and they went, did he just say he's wrong to me? He killed Uncle, Uncle Billy. And that's all. He threw him to the lights. What does he mean? He wronged no man. He was forgiven. And he lived from that consciousness of I'm forgiven. He lived from that consciousness. We need to start living not only for ourselves, but toward others. I need to assume you're forgiven. If I see you overtaking the sin, I go to you and just assume, you, but before I even go to you, that you're going to repent of it and move on. And leave it alone. And then if they don't receive it, they keep doing it openly, and you take two, and then you know you deal with the whole biblical way. We'll talk about that later. But that's not what the sermon's about. I thought I grace this morning. How do you? somebody did, it's because they're feeling guilty of something they did. I'd say 99% of people being grumpy and irritated and aggravated is because they're feeling something on the inside of them and, and, and they haven't released it yet to God. That's why we need to smile more than not and we need to love them because we got to love people into receiving grace. Do you know how God loves you? Like a freight train. loves you. When we enter spiritual droughts, don't panic. Don't run. Don't give up. Certainly don't backslide. If you start feeling... Come on. Come on. I'm starting to feel drunk now in the spirit. I've been drinking a little bit of the new wine. Praise God. But if you... Please hear this. If you start feeling dry in your spirit, don't give up. Don't backslide. Don't run. Don't run from your family. Don't run from each other. Don't run, run from your marriages. Don't run. When Adam and Eve sinned, how different would it have been if, if Adam, when Adam and Eve sinned, if instead of saying what they said, if they would have just turned to the Father and said, forgive us. Just forgive us, God. How different would things have been? They could have dealt with it right then and got it between them and God. Got it all worked out. They could have received His grace and mercy. Right then. But unfortunately, they got into the blame game and accusation. The reason so many believers get into accusation and trying to, to, to get you to talk, get you about your sin is because they got it in their own lives and they they feel like they're paying for their own if they can make you pay for yours. Stop it. I'm not saying that's here. I'm not. It's not a new covenant in Jesus' name. But I'm saying if it is, don't. Right. Amen? Amen. Amen. Just real quick, just a few more scriptures. Let's jump down. There's a sound of a heavy rain coming. There's a sound of a heavy rain coming. Turn to Deuteronomy 32. Two. You can read it up on the wall. I'm going to read five scriptures real quick. Let my teaching fall like rain, and my words descend like dew, like showers on new grass, like abundant rain on tender plants. If you need the reign of the Holy Ghost, get under the teaching of the Word. Yeah. If you're not under the teaching of the Word, the rain isn't going to fall on you. You need to be under it every day in your prayer closet, on Sundays, in every assembly, home groups, home groups, home groups. Get where the Word is being talked about. Get with believers. Call Jeff Murray and say, Jeff, I want to go to Starbucks and talk about the Word. Do you like Starbucks? Not coffee? You like to go? Okay, he likes to go. Okay. Call Misty. Misty, I want to talk about the Word. Let's go there. Let's talk about the Word. Let's go to Cow Tippers and talk about the Word. Let's go to Rocks and talk about the Word. Get where there's Word. Because His teaching will fall like rain and His words descend like dew. His words are like the rain of the Spirit. And as you talk about the Word amongst yourselves, don't just wait till Sunday. Get under the reign of the Word of God every single day of your life. Can you say amen? amen. Psalm 72, 6. He will be like rain falling on a mown field, like showers watering the earth. His presence 
Let me tell you, get in your prayer closet every day and do this. And just receive His presence. Let Him reign on you. Alright, real quick, Ezekiel 34, 26. I will bless them and the places surrounding my hill. The Bible talks about the hill of the Lord. It's talking about the assembly of the saints. This is the mountain of the Lord right here. This is the assembly of the saints. I will send down showers in season. There will be showers of blessing. Yay. God. I'm going to be like a light. In a minute, I'm going to run out that door and I'll come back in this one. I just need to run around a little bit. Because there's going to be showers of blessing. How many of y'all could use more blessing? Hosea 6.3 Let us acknowledge the Lord Just acknowledge Him Just in the portion of your day Just say Jesus When you're acknowledging As surely as the sun rises Boy I feel this He will appear He will come to us like the spring rains That The winter rains mean the early spring rains Like the spring rains that water the earth He's coming to us His presence is like a rain One last scripture Hosea 10.12 Sow for yourselves righteousness. Reap the fruit of unfailing love. And break up your unplowed ground. For it is time to seek the Lord until He comes and showers righteousness on you. Yes. Please stand your feet. Let's Right now, if you will, bow your heads and close your eyes for just a second. Holy Spirit, we receive the rain of your presence. Lord, we receive the rain of your word. Lord, we have sat under the rain of your word this morning. Lord, we have sat under the rain of your presence. Lord, our parched grounds are being dampened. By the rain of your spirit right now. I see it in my spirit. This, the cloud the size of a man's hand. Coming to this place. And Lord. I know beyond any shadow of a doubt. That there have been some dry seasons. And some lives in here. Carrie having her feet burned. Sarah dislocating her knee. This list goes on. I could go on and on and on. About different people having a dry season in their lives. Where some area of their life was affected. But right now, Lord, where there's a cloud of glory, the rain comes. First of all, we deal with our sin right now where you are. Just whisper before the Lord. Deal with it between you and Him. Go before God. If there's any sin in your life, ask Him to forgive you. Just ask Him. Any fresh sin, any new sin. Don't repent of old sin. Just take care of any sin that's in your life right now. Any old sin that you've already repented of, don't go back to it. Don't keep asking Him. But anything that's new, just ask Him right now. Now everybody say this after me. Lord Jesus, Jesus, we receive receive Your grace. grace. Like Saul, Saul, we become Paul. Paul. A A new creature. A new creation in Christ Jesus. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things are made new. I am new. And in this moment, it is as though I have never sinned. Never, ever, ever. Never, ever, ever. In your presence, I am made perfect by the blood. In Jesus' name.